the Golden Gate Bridge. You've never seen that yet. No, no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's in San Francisco. Just down below me, not too far. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Number 44. Yeah, that was. Uh, I have the... never visited, so I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, that's the West Coast, California. Um, it used to be the longest bridge in the world. Oh, yeah. Yeah, over a mile long. So, uh -huh. yeah, number 44 to cross. Yes, yeah, I wasn't sure that it was exactly that place. Oh, you wasn't when you picked the picture? Yes, I, I thought, but there's so many and I have never visited, so it wasn't mentioning. That's actually an icon. Um, anyone in the in the U.S. would know exactly what bridge that is if they see the picture of it. Uh, but anyone that doesn't live in the U.S., they would have no idea what that is. But I could guarantee you, anyone in the U.S., if you showed that to them, they would know exactly what bridge that is. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. Yeah, very, very popular. Oh, great. Uh -huh. um, people died building that. They actually got the bends. You know what the bends are? When you dive too deep and you come up too fast, you get the bends. Uh -huh. When they were building this bridge, they would they actually um, sealed off around the bases of these two pillars where water wasn't in there. Even though that there was no water in the, the area where they were working, the pressure around them from the water pushing on the walls against them they would come up out from underneath in an elevator and they would still get the bends. Even though they weren't underwater, per se, they were still under the pressure of the water around them. So they yeah. still, they would still get the bends when they came up and they did not know what was going on, these people dying. And they had no idea why, because they weren't diving, but they were still at the pressure of being like they were diving. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Even though that that that's crazy, I didn't know that either. I just learned that about fifteen years ago. Um, that that could happen, but it's crazy. So, anyways, yeah. to cross a bridge when you come to it, that's or when, um, as in, I would say, or someone come up to me and start complaining about something that we are not even close to yet. And I said, well, let's wait and cross that bridge when we get to it or when we get there. Um, no reason to complain about something until you get to that point, to get to that spot in, uh, in the day or in, your, in the process of your project. So, yeah, let's deal with this. Let's deal with that when we get there. Let's cross a bridge or let's cross that bridge when we get there. So go ahead, stop. Okay, great. Uh -huh. Yes, so to cross a bridge when you come to it. This is used to remind someone that you only need to deal with a situation when it happens. So your friend might be concerned what if I forget all my words during my IELTS speaking exam. And then you tell that friend, cross that bridge when you come to it. Good. Yes, worried uh, uh, the problem that happens. So. Oh, the next don't, don't smashed. Yeah, don't okay. cry, spilt milk. Yes, this is one that um, we use a bit. No reason to cry over spilt milk. No reason to cry over something so petty, so little. Um, that's oh, we, we use that too also. Oh, so you know this one, yes. Mm -hmm. You say milk also? Yes, uh huh. Yeah. Exactly the same, uh huh. Oh, so they already know what this one is. So the same, how would you say it in Portuguese? Yes, yes, but if you have some examples, it's good to add also. 
But how do you, how would you, how do you say it in Portuguese? Uh, não chore o leite derramado. Não chore o leite derramado. É, não. <laughs> é, ó, não chore. Não chore. O leite. O leite. Derramado. Derramado. Uh -huh. It's exactly the same. Oh, perfect. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, like if uh, uh, something's fixable, which most things are fixable, um, no reason to complain about it or cry, to uh, bitch and moan. Let's just fix it and get it done. Um, yeah, so... Anyways, yeah, go for it, Sutton. Yes, yes, to cry over spilled milk. This is when someone complain about a loss from the past. So let's say I had a party weeks ago and now I'm complaining. I can't believe it. John didn't come to my party. Well, my friend can say don't cry over spilt milk. It was three weeks ago. Why are you still talking about it? Yes. Yes. So old, not even worth crying over still. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Whoa, look at these pictures. Uh, so yeah. The <laughs> number 46. What is that thing? <laughs> Curiosity killed the cat. Oh my God. Wow. Meow. <laughs> so, yes, uh, as in, like, don't go looking in places that you shouldn't be looking in because you might, your curiosity might get you hurt. You oh, know? Wow. Yeah, um, even even listening in on people's conversations can actually get you hurt. You okay. might overhear yeah. someone's conversation that uh, can get you killed, depending on where you're at. Any any um, big cities, you can be really careful to listen in on something. The government's conversations or somebody high up in the mob but um yeah don't be going and looking in other people's closets you could say to curiosity killed the cat oh yes like, that what I, I didn't know can you say again something that you if you you know being curious being curious and going and looking in other people's closets can get you killed yes mm -hmm. being Curious can get you injured or, yeah, like this cat. What is this wire here? Let me check this out. Blam! Got him electrocuted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor cat. His hair. Is that his hair, dude? <laughs> Looks like a gremlin. <laughs> yes. Mm. Oh, my. Meow. <laughs> Go ahead. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Curiosity kills the cat. This is used to say that be inquisitive or asking a lot of questions can lead you to an unpleasant situation. So let's say your husband our wife uh, uh, is doing for you a surprising birthday party and you ask a lot of questions. What are you doing? Where are we going? Who's coming? Then your husband or wife can say, curiosity kills the cat just to remind you don't ask so many questions. 